Hey guys, Dr. Marshall Lemoyne with PhysioU and welcome to the teaching table. I'm here with two DPT3 students, Chris and Cam, and today we're going to be talking about manipulations or now kind of known as high velocity, low amplitude thrusts, right? Previously known as grade fives. So lots of names for it. So if we think about the cervical spine, which is the one that has the most red flags and caution behind it, right? Um, so you want to know about your, your D's and your N's, right? So Think about your um, five Ds, three Ns, so nystagmus, all that stuff, uh, diplopia, double vision, drop attacks. Ask about that with patients. Um, we think about some of the common ones that might make somebody unstable. So do they have any ligament instability? Do they have any fractures? Are they a possibility of ligament instability, meaning they have things where they've taken a lot of steroids, so asthma, chronic asthma. Uh, they're someone who might have a risk for a fracture, so osteoporosis. So those are people that are also contraindications um, that I would want to worry about. Um, people with nerve root pathology, right? So they have radiating arm pain, leg pain. Um, they have any type of neurological reflex. We're probably going to do any high velocity thrusts to that spine because we want to make sure we're aware. we want to just play it safe, right? Now, if someone just has some numbness and tingling in their leg, right, but the reflexes are normal, myotomes normal. I have no problem performing a thrust on that patient, knowing I've checked for safety of that patient. Yeah. Um, good question. I would say, based on each region, there's kind of a list of ones that we'll throw up on a PowerPoint that you should be aware of, um, just for safety. I think when we when we talk about high velocity, low amplitude thrust, right, there is this fear factor, right? And one of the things that we uh, we talk about when I teach this to the fellows is that you know the person performing the manip shouldn't have a higher cortisol level than the patient on the table having a minute done to them. You should both be relatively low. The patient should feel comfortable, but the therapist should feel comfortable as well. And that's tough because unless you've done them a lot on patients, right, you gotta practice somewhere. There's, there's always gonna be, that was my first patient. So the more you can practice these with, um, with students, right, with interns, with uh, classmates, the more you can practice it and get comfortable, the better you're more, the more likely you are gonna do actually do it on a patient. With that being said, when it's time to do it on a patient for the first time, you're probably still not going to feel comfortable because that person has pain. So start to practice with, th with thrusts that you are very confident with, right? So ones that aren't very scary. So such as an ankle dorsiflexion manip, right? Or a leg pull, right? So some of those distraction manips, right? You should feel very, very comfortable and confident that, hey, you know what? There's not a big wind up. The patient's laying there. You're not having to twist to their spine. It's pretty easy. As you start to become more and more confident with those, then you get to start to move closer to, hey, low back and thoracic are relatively safe, and you get confident, and then you start practicing cervical. Um, yeah, so just so practice building in just that, uh, that speed into your clinic to build your confidence. Right? Um, and then just kind of remember to tell yourself, if you, do the right, if you ask the right questions and you go through the right checklists, they're safe. The prediction rule for a thoracic spine thrust is for people with neck pain. So the idea is they've had symptoms less than 30 days, there's no symptoms that go past the shoulder, meaning it's a localized issue. Um, when they look up, it does not aggravate their symptoms. So maybe again, maybe we shouldn't be treating neck and we'll treat a little bit lower down. They're not fearful, so FABQ of less than 12. Um, they have a diminished upper thoracic kyphosis and their cervical extension range is less than 30 degrees. So what does that all mean? They have neck pain that doesn't travel. They're not fearful, it's not chronic. When they look up, it doesn't hurt, but they have limited range. That's kind of what that prediction rule is telling us. So we're gonna work on giving them a thrust here. And they did two types. They did, in the article they actually did three. They did a flexion extension and they did a distraction option. So we're gonna work on the extension and then the flexion or the prone and supine. And so for here, if we've identified, we did PAs, we identified either the painful or the stiff and we're gonna wind it up. So again, using palm, we don't need to go just like this pisiform, right? It's okay to use your fingers to help wind up tissue. The more fascial and skin and tissue I can wind up, the more likely I'm gonna be able to go through to actually his joint level, right? So wind that up. Here, again, start up, wind it up, keep my fingers down, right? It kind of helps to block or it helps to disguise some of the pressure. I know some people are taught this way, but then that puts all of your pressure on their pisiform. So let's open it up a tad, good. Take a deep breath in. My chest is over them and breathe out. All right, I make sure I look up before I thrust, right? If I'm crunched down like this thrusting, it's hard for me to produce any power. So I wanna make sure here, they call this like a lat lock, where I lift up and I almost depress my scapulas to get a lat lock, so I have all my weight's over him. Good. If we flip you over, go supine. Good. All right. All right. 
so right, I'm going to stick something inside my fingers just to prevent hyperflexion. Right? But arms across your chest. Good. The idea is we want to wind their arms up to create almost like a barrier though. So that way if I thrust, it's not all of his shoulders. He has pretty loose shoulders. So we're actually going to add something in the middle here to create tension. If we can create tension at his shoulders, and I can then use it. So stick that through you. You okay? Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's better there. Okay. So bend this knee. Good. And you're going to roll towards me. Good. Again, I kind of find that segment that I want to thrust at. Start above, right? And I'm going to wind up tissue. So I start with my finger pointing up towards scapula and neck and then wind it up so it's facing towards the opposite shoulder. His spinous process should sit in this gutter here, right? So the spinous process should not be on my bone. Otherwise, it's painful for me, painful for him, right? So I'm winding up. It's in that gutter. Add a little bit of compression so when I roll him over, it doesn't move, right? So now my chest is on him. All right, lift your head up. Good. I can play with it a little bit here where it's off my fingers, on my fingers, off my fingers, on my fingers to make sure, hey, yep, that's where I like it. Take a deep breath in, breathe out. Follow him in. Good. And roll off. Perfect. So if we recap, thrusts are safe if we ask the appropriate questions and do the appropriate screening. Right? They're effective, right? All the, all the prediction rules and the guidelines give them an A rating, right? So they're safe, um, they're effective. And then the benefit to them, right? There's lots of benefits, not only just this mobility deficit problem, but there's a lot of research that talks about just pain gating and neuro, neurological changes um, in terms of breakthrough of pain, improved range of motion, um, ability to activate muscles better. So we should use them in our practice. And the only way we're gonna use them is if we become more comfortable and practice them. So practice on each other if it's safe. Um, the out, the out, the long-term goal should not always be to get a cavitation, right? It's nice when we do, you kind of feel rewarded for it, but studies show that even without a cavitation, just the thrusting itself, that quick stretch, um, patients get benefits from it. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and you learned something. Uh, take a look at all of our social media accounts um, and drop us a line, give us a like, as well as go to physiou.com and take a look at our mentoring minutes and teaching tables. Hope all is well, guys, and we'll talk to you later. Take care.